Joining us now to discuss the future of Bitcoin and their plans to build a Nasdaq-like exchange called Gemini are Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss. Good morning, guys. Thank you morning. so much for coming. Um, so I need you to start with a defense. It has been a ropey year for Bitcoin, right? The price has collapsed. There are ties to organized crime and the Silk Road. And then you have Mt. Gox, where the currency just simply disappeared. Why should we still have faith in Bitcoin? Well, I think like any new technology, um, <clears throat> it's going through its growing pains right now. Um, but we don't look at the price day to day. I think that we look at it, you know, in a five, ten year um, time horizon. And uh, the critical pieces of infrastructure, like a U.S. based exchange, are being built as we speak. So I think that's going to long term build a very interesting situation for Bitcoin. Tyler, have you guys hitched your wagon to Bitcoin specifically, or uh, are you interested in all cryptocurrencies? Because there's the idea that it may not win. Right. Um, right now, <clears throat> Bitcoin, but uh, we do believe there, there may be other cryptocurrencies as well. But Gemini is a, a agnostic platform. To all so crypto you can trade any, different, any of these different currencies? Right now, it'll just be Bitcoin. Uh, why are you going the road of trying to set up an exchange? Of all ways to do this, the exchanges seem to be the part that's had the most problems. And again, I go back to Mt. Gox. Yeah, so that, and part of that problem is that there hasn't been U.S. regulation, and that regulation is being built and uh, just around the corner. So people have been forced to use exchanges offshore and deal with those risks and lack of transparency, lack of regulation. So I think that a U.S. regulated um, entity um, is the next step to really bringing people who don't want to or are unable to transact on a foreign exchange into the Bitcoin economy in America. Is this thing really going to launch in the first quarter? That's we, we think so. Yeah. yeah? What do the, the regulators think? Yeah. What are the regulators um, think? So we're waiting on licensing. Um, so that's the regulators. Uh, you'd have to ask them. They know. But um, publicly, they've said uh, Q1. So we're thinking uh, Q1. What if, I, go ahead. I don't know whether we've got this chart, but I, I was, you know, I took a look yesterday of um, actual amount of transactions <laughs> per day for Bitcoin, um, and uh, it's not going the way you guys would want it to go. It's not looking like this. It's kind of tootling up at uh, below 45 degrees. So. Um, what do you do to make that look, make that growth exponential instead of arithmetic, which is what we're looking at right now? So, so I think Toodle is a technical term. By the way. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so I think like the infrastructure layer of Bitcoin is where we are right now, and building things like a U.S.-based exchange is a key piece of that. And then the next um, piece is the application layer. And so I don't think you can really have the application layer and see the explosive growth without the actual infrastructure. So if you take it back to the early days of the Internet, mm -hmm. without the routers and the Cisco's and things like that, um, you can't get the Googles. You two are known to surround yourself with smart people, guys like Randall Krosner, math people out of Brown University. It's a school to the south of the Charles River, it's down by <laughs> Providence. Harvard, you guys Harvard. get smart people around you. Where's your trip point on the price of Bitcoin? If you've got a time series going south, do you have in your head a price of Bitcoin where your exchange doesn't work? Um, I, mean, so, I think there's a price of Bitcoin where, where Bitcoin doesn't work. So, right? so where is that? Well, zero, right? Um, Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin, the asset, fuels mining, which allows the blockchain technology to work. So um, certainly a very low price of Bitcoin is, is dangerous, but we're not there anytime soon. And I think that there's so much money, the biggest money is still on the sidelines. On the volume basis, you can run your exchange the, the, with a Bitcoin at $10 versus, where is it now, Olivia, 242 So one of the interesting things is the volume of Bitcoin has been actually quite high over the last couple of months, um, higher than, than the previous six At a lower months. price. Yeah, at a lower price. So um, from an exchange perspective, there's actually a ton of volatility. Um, but obviously, from a mining perspective, you need to incentivize the miners mm. who are keeping um, basically archiving and auditing the network. So as Tyler's point is, a price of zero, obviously, the whole thing doesn't really work. But we're not at that price where I think that there's a real risk there. How much Bitcoin have you guys bought? Um, so I think a year ago, we, we mentioned that we owned around 1%. And so, since then, have you been so, building the position? Um, we haven't sold any. So. You haven't sold any. Yeah. Do you mine it? Uh, yeah. We do not mine. Uh, mining is such a professionalized um, pursuit these days. There's companies with. So over. you guys are eating ramen noodles. Is that the headline here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just want to be sure I got that right. <laughs> uh, Tyler, Cameron, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, and as you say, your exchange Gemini ho still hoping to launch in the first quarter. Yes, that's right.